Hi guys, in this video, we're going to learn from Steve Snyder, a world-renowned speaker and author, how to use both of our minds, what he calls our brain mind and our heart mind to increase our happiness. Welcome to Happiness Adventure. I'm Lisa and together we'll explore ways to cultivate real joy in our lives. I wanted to start with asking you about happiness being a mindset. Because I know a lot of people might have heard that we choose to be happy, but you also talk about something called the brain mind and the heart mind. And can you tease out for us what those terms mean when you say that? Sure. The, the brain mind is just another term for the conscious mind, uh, the logical, rational mind, the mind that is of volition, the one that uses willpower and deductive abilities. The heart mind is the subconscious mind, the mind of imagination and intuition and inspiration, um, the mind that beats the heart and pumps the blood and regulates the body temperature, does that autonomic nervous system thing. The conscious mind is something that you are in control of theoretically all the time. The subconscious mind is a mind you can gain control of by closing your eyes and going into this flow state, the alpha brainwave state. And then you can you open up a filter between the two minds called reticular activating system, and you can actually communicate the two with the two minds together. And happiness is something you have to choose, but not just consciously. You have to also choose it subconsciously, because if your automatic pilot is on being unhappy, you can want to be happy, but it, it, the autopilot clicks in, and, and everything you see makes you unhappy. So you have to choose it with both minds. For example, when you look at something. Um, if you have a habit of not liking what that looks like, then it'll make you unhappy. But you can change that. You can reprogram your mind so that when you look at that thing, it makes you happy instead. Somebody who had a, a bad experience in the ocean looks at the ocean and, and gets fearful, but they can reprogram their mind so they can look at the ocean and see the beauty of it. How do we unearth what our subconscious thoughts might be or our autopilot might be telling us that could be detracting from our happiness? Well, that's the real key to mindfulness, to being the observer, to closing your eyes and relaxing and just paying attention to your breathing. For example, there are lots of ways of meditating, but pay attention to your breathing and then your thoughts will go by. You know, they, they, you'll have thoughts and by observing them, you can see what your autopilot is set on. You can see the kind of thoughts you think, whether they're positive thoughts or negative thoughts. All thoughts are valuable. Good thoughts are good because you get to embrace them and bad thoughts are good because you get to release them. So if you don't allow yourself to have the negative thoughts, become aware of them, and then choose to release them, they will perpetuate. How do you recommend that a person go from not being in touch with the heart brain to a place where it's almost automatic or natural to have that? Well, practice, 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 of course. Um, the, the simplest technique that I've been teaching for 50 years is to close your eyes and take a deep breath and imagine yourself in a safe and peaceful place because that creates the environment the inner environment to feel safe and to feel happy so a place for memory or a place you've always dreamed of going or a combination thereof for some people a safe and peaceful place is is, is outer space you know like stars the, and for other people it's the color purple you know it can be anything but whatever your intuition which comes from your subconscious heart mind whatever your intuition says would be the place that makes me feel safe that's what you do so you close your eyes and say what would make me feel safe and just see what comes up see what pops up and then the first thing that pops up is intuition intuition is before even thought you have intuition so the first thing that pops up that's the one and then just practice going there you know like every day several times a day close your eyes take 10 seconds 20 seconds if you got a minute great use a whole minute but it only takes 10 or 20 seconds really because to the subconscious mind 20 seconds is a long time you know to a mind that can have dreams that seem like they're hours long in a few seconds 20 seconds can seem like a really long time so just going there frequently so that it becomes autopilot becomes automatic it's just a place you can close your eyes and go to you know the first time you do it it won't be that easy and the second time it'll be a little easier and eventually gosh eventually it's just automatic you just close your eyes and you're there you know because you've been doing it for so often so many times and it's a great technique for a lot of applications one of which is if you want to pay attention to something then you can close your eyes and go there pay attention to that 
And now you have a state of attention that you can bring to the thing you want to pay attention to next. So instead of hoping what you're about to do is interesting and get your attention, you can get your own attention and bring it to whatever it is you want to pay attention to. It's a very powerful technique. If, if for example, you're sitting in your office and working on something and somebody interrupts you, you can say, give me a sec, and you stare off into space and see your peaceful place, and, and now you're not paying attention to that thing anymore on your desk, and, and now you can bring your attention to the person who walked into your office and give them your total attention. You can live a life of, of serial-focused passion, you know, no longer multitasking, no longer dividing your attention, always paying attention with everything you've got to the one thing that's right there in front of you. And so I've been practicing this for many, many years, and I'm really, you know, quite quite good at it. It's really easy for me now. But with people starting off, especially for adults, for children, it's much easier. But for adults whose minds are so full of so much stuff and so busy, it's it's a bit of a challenge to meditate, to become mindful. But the, the secret is you don't have to be great at it at first. All you have to do is do it. And even if you don't do it well, you'll do it better the next time and better the next time. And that's the truth with almost everything. You practice, you get better, you know. So let go of the need to be excellent, need to be perfect at first, and just do it. You know, the first time you close your eyes and just focus on your breathing, all kinds of other thoughts are going to pop up and you're going to be taken away by them. But the secret is as soon as you realize you were taken away by that thought, you can take a deep breath and come back to paying attention to your breathing again. And uh, eventually it, there'll be less thoughts that take you away. There won't be less thoughts. The, the, there's always going to be thoughts. It's just if you can just observe them and let them go rather than be carried away by them. That's the secret. Right. Steve, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Thank you. We just heard from Steve Snyder about how we have both a heart mind and a brain mind. Steve lectures around the world, is a master of self-hypnosis, and has read over 100,000 books. He's got a lot of great resources for you, including a rhyming Facebook page, and the links to all of those things are in the description box right below this video, so be sure to check those out. While you're there, in the comment section, let me know, have you ever heard of a heart mind? You can subscribe to Feed Your Happy with a bite-sized video each week, and I look forward to seeing you soon for our next happiness adventure. Mm -hmm.